Hi, today I'm going to show you some tips for first-person animation in Blender for Unity. In Blender, there is an option named Frame Rate. Frame Rate decides how many frames are playing per second. So when you turn on the Blender first time, the default frame rate is 24 frames per second. It means that it plays 24 frames per second. So in here, this animation was made with 30 frames per second. And when you play, it looks like this. However, when I change this frame rate to something like the 60, it play like this. It's faster than 30 frames per second because it renders exactly twice than 30 frames per second. More frames make your animation more smooth, however requires more keyframes you have to put in. Also increase the size of the file of your animation. However, when you are making an animation for using in Unity, you have to decide proper frame rate because it affects in your game. For instance, if you made an animation with 30 frames per second like me, but generally in Unity, the frames per second is way much higher than 30 frames per second. The list is more than 60 frames per second. So what happened? You are making an animation with 30 frames per second and move it to the Unity. Surprisingly, it works without any problem because when you import it, 30 frames per second animation into Unity, Unity will automatically interpolate each frames so that your animation didn't break. And the most time, those interpolation works really fine. However, if you did some kind of frame-specific actions, those interpolation makes your animation messy. However, if you make an animation with a 30 frames per second and your game is playing on 30 frames per second, there won't be any problem because both Unity and Blender has same frames per second. And there is another tip. When you're playing a Unity game in Android, it forcefully set frame rate to 30 frames per second. So like this, if you make an animation for Unity and your game is targeted to the Android device, I think that 30 frames per second will fine. So here is the camera in the Blender and here is the camera in Unity. As you can see, both preview of the camera doesn't look like same. Both camera located at the 000 location and 000 position. However, both camera doesn't render the same screen. That's because they have different field of view. In your Unity, the camera has 60 field of view However, in Blender, this camera has focal length 35 millimeters. So you can switch millimeters to field of view and set to the 60, but still, they have different look. I'm still figuring out why both have different view, even they have same field of view and position. However, I discovered that setting field of view to the 90 makes the camera really close to Unity. So in the preview here, you can see that the pistol and the both hands are rendering here. And in Unity, you can see the gun and hands are rendering too. When you're making an animation, you probably use inverse kinematics. 
So when you move the object that you use inverse kinematics, these connected bones are moving automatically. However, when you imported the animation into Unity, those constraints will not work anymore. Let me show you. Let's play a game. And just like Blender, let's find the bone in the hand. Does not affect the mesh and the gun. So keep in mind when you're making an animation, all your constraints in Blender will not work in the Unity, they are just work in your Blender file only. So let me export my animation as FBX. And in armature here, you can see that only deformed bones is turned off by default. Let's just export. The drag model in the camera. And let's open it. And as you can see, there are some objects named ends with under bar end of each bones like this so these bones are totally useless in unity these bones are used in blender not in not in the unity so when you export an animation for the unity make sure you have to check only the form bones so that you can save the file size and the render improvements and less complexity in your hierarchy. So here is a re-imported version and as you can see there is no more blah blah underbar and bones of each object. When you make a multiple animations sometimes you want to bring some part of animation into another animation. You can do that by simply copy keyframes from here and move to another animation and paste it. Let me show you. Let's assume that... Let's see, in the pose mode... Yeah, here's the animation called the reload. And I want to play the whole reload animation after this fire animation. Both are different animation, so so go back to reload animation. Make sure your cursor in here and press A to select everything. Also move your mouse to the left and press A nearby here will select those bones also and then Ctrl C to copy it and move to the fire and in here before paste it move your mouse cursor in here and press A to select everything and then Ctrl V to paste now there you go When you're making an animation, you can set the constraint, which will help your animation more convenient. There is a constraint called the child of. It is exactly the same when you are parenting the bones like this. In here, this bone is a child of this child of this bone. So when I move this gun bone the slide bone will also move automatically. So when should you use child up instead of actually parenting the bone in the edit mode? Well, the difference of the child of constraint and parent child in edit mode, 
that you can adjust influence in here. So if you want to move these hands following the gun, but sometimes you don't want to do that, that the child of constraint will help. So here the influence is one, so moving the gun, also moving the hand bone two. However, when I decrease the influence to the zero, now moving the gun does not affect in my hand. You can adjust the value between one and zero to make less influence. Anyway, using child of constraint can change the influence in the pose mode. This technique is quite handy in some cases. Let me show an example here. There is a two Mac bones here. And this left hand is a child has child of constraints for each Mac 1 and Mac 2 bone. But by default, it does not affect moving the Mac 2 bone and it only moves when the Mac 1 bone moves. That's because I had to set the Mac 1 influence to 1 and Mac 2 is a 0, 0.0. So from the beginning of the animation, moving Macbone will also move this left hand. However, at some point of animation, moving Mac one bone does not affect on left hand. However, moving the Mac two bone, it affects on the moving left hand. Something like this. When you export animation from Blender, in Animation tab, there is an option called Simplify. By default, it has 1.0, and literally, this will simplify your animation so that it can reduce the size of your file. However, if you imported the animation in Unity, and you found some errors in your animation, then change this value, something like 0, to read up all the simplify stuffs. So here's the animation with the simplify 1.0 value. And you might notice that there are some animation issues in here. You can see the hand and guns are not moving together. So exporting animation with zero simplify will solve the problem. When you are making an animation in Blender, you probably use lock rod option here. It means location and rotation. So when you move the bond, it automatically records a change of the location and rotation so that you can make animation really fast. However, there is another option called visual location and visual rotation and so on. So what are those visual location and rotation? Well, um, this right hand has a child of constraint. So when I move the gun, it only records the location and rotation of the gun, not the hand. It means that your hand does not change at all. In most cases, it's fine. However, what if you were moved the gun over here and hand, and in the next frame, you want to keep position and rotation of, of this right bone 
but does not affect on the gun bone. Well, let's try. In the first frame, I'm gonna move up a little bit. And then I'm gonna select the right hand and press I to insert keyframe. And then I'm gonna move the gun down and let's see the animation does not work as you expected. So the visual lock lot will help in this case. So this time, let's move up here and select your hand and click this thing to turn it off. And in here, press I and select visual lock lot. Now we can see now move the gun uh, then move the gun down still like this and let's see the animation yeah it seems like it's different but still it does not your intention so to fix this select your right arm and press I in here in influence and move to next frame set influence to zero then there you go now your hand is in here and will not affect the gun anymore this technique is useful when you're making some kind of disappearing object and the object is apparent of the bond when you are using the child of constraint uh, you might notice that this technique cannot be used when the bones are just parented in edit mode. It only works in trial of constraint. Alright, thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers!